is Vanessa Whitaker. Um, I work with uh, Sally Marcus on the rural interpreter. Um, I also work with uh, Leo Jaramillo, who will be speaking shortly. I am going to do an introduction of these young men, and then they're going to take over and talk to you in regards to dance and then in regards to cheer. I will then come back and talk to you about um, tech and uh, a few dance items that we have going on for um, the new score sheet for dance. So we'll go ahead and get started here. Back in old age here. Okay, first I'll introduce um, Keith. Keith is a native of Bloomington, Indiana, who has been involved in cheer and dance for the past 14 years. He graduated from Indiana State University with a bachelor's in broadcast journalism and a double minor in fashion design and Afro-American studies. During his time at Indiana State University, he cheered on a Fulbright scholarship, and in 2007, he won the NCA College National Championships. After college, he went on and worked at the Walt Disney World Resort and danced for two years in High School Musical 2 at the Hollywood Studios theme park. After his work at Disney, he started coaching full-time at the Maryland Vipers. Within his first year at Vipers, he coached his small senior five team that placed 19th in the small all-girl division at the cheer, at, I'm sorry, at the Star Legacy in Virginia and managed three locations with over 700 athletes. Keith has spent the last two seasons at the University of Wyoming. He was the head dance and assistant cheer coach and prides himself in accomplishing one of his dreams by coaching college at a Division 1A program. His cheer team placed ninth in 2015 and this year finished second in a Challenge Cup and seventh overall. His dance team got a gold bid to College Nationals and was the first dance team at the university ever to do so. Keith is now the program director of the at CC Champs All-Star Cheer Gym in North Jersey. Mr. Keith Smith. <laughs> Your next speaker is Leo. Leo is a proud alumni of the University of New Mexico where he cheered on the Lobos as a member of the national rank co-ed cheer. For four years, he successfully coached and choreographed high school cheer and dance teams across the state for nearly 15 years. His successful spirit program and his commitment to student athletes at Española Valley High School were major contributions to Leo, being named 2009 New Mexico Activities Association Spirit Coach of the Year in 2011. He was honored as the National Federation of State High School Association Competitive Spear Squad Official of the Year. The honor was bestowed upon him for his role as one of the very first spirit officials in the state of New Mexico. The same year, spirit was inducted as a sport by the NMAA. In 2013, Leo was named a legend in cheer and dance for his successful career as cheerleader coach choreographer and judge. Leo continues to be actively involved in spirit by judging at the state and national level. He is currently assisting the NMA with spirit by training new judges and serving on a team of three to organize and execute the state competition in 2014. Leo made history at Northern New Mexico College by being named the first cheer and dance coach in school history. Leo recently completed his second season with the team and has big plans for the college's competitive program. Leo is a native of Española Valley and a 1995 graduate of Española. Leo earned a bachelor's in mass communication and journalism for UNM in 2000 and a master's in education from the College of Santa Fe in 2003. And I've had the great pleasure of working with this young man for a very long time. Mr. Leo Hadamio. I could be a little louder than that. <laughs> I get it. 
so thank you so much for being here, but it's only fair that if we get an introduction, I'd like for you to introduce yourselves. Keith is a man who loves New Mexico and came and judged our spirit competition, and he's one of my very best friends that when we're on the national circuit and we see each other, we're like family. We call each other brothers. So you're part of my extended family in New Mexico, and I would like for you to introduce yourselves, maybe tell us how many years you've judged in New Mexico and which cheer program or dance program you've come from. And we'll start with my cousin, Kayla.
and she holds state titles in dance, so she knows both cheer and dance. So what's exciting about today is I see people like Annalise from Taos that I had the pleasure of coaching when she was eight and nine years old, seeing people like Melanie when I was only 18 years old, I took St. Pius High School and to see her in here to join us, and people like my cousin Kayla and other people like Hope that I helped at St. Uh, Mike's High School and the girls from Hope Christian Academy that I helped along the way too. So it's exciting to see people, everyone here today. And before we begin, I want to start with a quick story if you don't mind. So I remember the year was 1993 and it was the first year I decided to cheer at Espanola Valley High School. There were nine guys on the team and there were about 15 girls. And so I remember seeing Miss Vanessa walking along with score sheets and I remember observing her and seeing what they were doing. I asked my coach at that time, who's that woman and what does she do? She said, that's the queen bee of cheer, Leo. <laughs> and she knows everything about cheer and dance. And there was a team of them. And I remember looking at them and admiring them. As a coach, I then got to really see the type of work Vanessa really did. And I got to really appreciate what she did. And then I remember it was just two years ago that I was walking alongside Vanessa down a long hallway. And I told Vanessa this story and she slapped my arm and said, you're crazy, Leo. But walking alongside Vanessa, I knew I had made it in the sports of cheer and dance because anybody who has the honor to work alongside Vanessa and pick up her knowledge knows that you've actually made it and we're both trying to make an impact in the state of New Mexico. So Vanessa is a trailblazer in the state and so she's somebody that we're going to turn to for um, questions to help us with questions and answers. But she's someone I've always admired since high school and I'm really excited to work alongside her now. And so Keith and I do something a little bit different when we present. When we present, it's more of an interactive type of class, so it's not going to be just slide after slide. If any of our veteran judges like Angela or Renee, anyone wants to jump in and answer questions you might have, feel free to stop us at any time. So we're both broadcast journalist majors, so we both sometimes pretend it's breaking news and we'll pass <laughs> off the mic. <laughs> <laughs> so you might see that. But thanks for the introduction, Vanessa, and thanks to all of you for coming. And we're using a microphone today because it's being recorded, okay? They want to make sure our mugs are going to last in history. <laughs> so today's training goals are to try to make sure that all of you are fair and objective judges. So it's typically hard for those of us who have coached before because we sometimes think that maybe we were cheated out of a state championship or maybe that we were cheated out of a competition. But the truth is, judges come together to formulate who they believe the champion should be. And that's because of their different scores that they have on their score sheets. And those all come together to determine who the first, second, and third place winners are. Now that I've judged, I've realized I was never cheated. And when I go back and I look at those videos, I can see areas of improvement. And I can now see what I could have done better as a coach or what I could have done with my athletes. And it was an eye that a different judge saw that they realized, hey, maybe you should have done this a little better or tried this. And it's not that I was being cheated. It's just that I wasn't doing what I should have been doing, which was following the score sheet to know how to choreograph a routine. Your responsibility is to rank teams and not necessarily by taking a sheet and saying, man, if Angela, she's been with us some time, said, I've seen... I'm just going to make something up. I've seen Espanola Valley High School before, and I already know they're going to win. So I'm going to make them my high score, and then every other team that comes in, I'm just going to follow after Espanola Valley. Well, that's not how it works. And it also doesn't work that you score your first teams a lot higher, and then think, wow, maybe I made a mistake, so what do I do? Well, it's too late. So what you need to do is really follow your score sheet and ensure that you're judging the team based on what they're doing, your knowledge of the sport, and what you think they should earn on that score sheet, not scoring high automatically, or just assuming based on other performances what they should be getting. You're going to notice that Keith and I are going to talk about communication all the time. Communication skills are key in writing on those judging sheets. And so I'm going to use Santa Fe High, for example. One year asked Vanessa and I, how could I have got an excellent comment and received a score of a 7.5 out of 10? How does that happen? Or a good friend from Taos, Leo, how did I get a 5 and they're saying good job when 5 is halfway through? What do we need to do? So good job and excellent comments aren't going to help a coach and his or her team, but comments like synchronization on that stunt sequence was off 
or girls, make sure you watch those formations. Your transitions are really messy. Clean those up. Something that's going to help the coach and their team on their quest to a state title. I'm also really focused on the little details when they're performing, such as hip flexors on their jumps. If their jumps aren't turned down, their hips are under. Comment on those little details so they know how to perfect it and get a better score later on. Because a lot of times we're judging really, really fast and we don't get time to focus on the fine details. We're really, really focused on those fine details because it helps the, the coaches and the team prepare and be better. Also, keep in mind that a lot of teams, just because you've seen them earlier in the year, the routines change and upgrade it. So make sure you're always working and perfecting what you see on the floor at that given time. We have three types of judges, okay? And so one I call the hybrid, because that's a mixture of a performance judge and a technical judge. So Vanessa is a hybrid. I consider myself a hybrid because if they need us at any time to do cheer, we can do it. If we need to be on dance, we can do it. We can also tech. The other two type of judges is the technical judge. The responsibility of the technical judge is to ensure that all state and national rules are being followed. And so you're kind of considered the bad cop in the world of cheer and dance. <laughs> And so you're the guy that's looking to bust them for anything they've done wrong. And the coach is like my mom when she'd get a speeding ticket who would say, oh, I'm sorry, I, we were listening to a good song and I was speeding, I was singing Volver, Volver, and it was <laughs> really hard. <laughs> a coach is the same way who will say, I didn't know that was a rule, um, I'm sorry, but the truth is you still have to dock them for what they do wrong and the rules they break. The next type of judge is the performance judge. A bad misconception about performance judges in the state of New Mexico is since it's we're such a close-knit community, we all know each other, we've either coached people, we've cheered together in college, or we've worked together somehow, that we play favorites in the field of sports and dance in New Mexico. Well, the truth is, we don't. And a performance judge's responsibility is to ensure that the team who has earned that first place truly is the team who should be in that first place position. So a performance judge isn't thought of in this state as the bad guy, but the good guy, okay? So it's the good guy versus bad guy, and then the hybrid. So what we're really looking for this time around is for most of you to consider becoming a hybrid too, because we're running out of technical judges in the state of New Mexico. It's getting tiring for Vanessa to look after video, after video, after video that's submitted, and she's one of the only ones who can do it. So if you can think about becoming a tech judge, that would really help us out. All judges must be licensed by the New Mexico Activities Association and be at least 18 years of age. And so with that said, this right here constitutes as the training to make you a licensed official. Okay, there's a test to be a tech, but the test isn't hard. It's an open book exam for you to look over your national safety rules book, and you must take the exam, which will be posted by the NMAA or sent out by Dana Pappas of the NMAA to an email address that you provide us. You must score at least an 85% on the exam. So, Annalise, this isn't like college where you can say, man, I'm going to cram for three weeks and I'm going to get that 85 because you can take your book with you. And Vanessa and I always like to say that the book is a living book. It's because it always, there's changes all the time. And within time, good tech judges remember the history of rules, why there's a new rule, and you'll just start to get, you'll, you'll remember. Like Vanessa will just tell me, did you just see the 2.56? I'll say, oh yeah, page 13, I saw it. And so you just start to get to know the book because you start to live the book. And so it's not something that's going to come overnight. Um, it's something that you can continue to practice to be a good tech judge by either shadowing a good tech or coming to competitions and just watching and trying to see if you find anything wrong within the book. We could also help you with a cheat sheet. Judges are independent contractors in the state of New Mexico, which means that you work directly with the school when it comes to mileage and payment. So we're that middle guy. I'm the middle guy who will say, hey, yeah, you've got two really good girls and one good guy who can come up, and then I'm going to hand them over to you, and then it's the school's responsibility to be in touch with you and to work with you on payment and what exactly you need to do to make sure that competition is a success. So for example, I'm going to use a good example. If Vanessa has been asked to judge at Taos High School for a competition, Vanessa is the furthest judge from the competition, which means she will be the one who will get mileage for that one event. 
because she's coming the furthest. So schools don't pay mileage for every spirit official who's coming to the event. But there's an option. The option is they can ask Vanessa, Vanessa, are you willing to pick up Leo Jaramillo in Española and bring him to the event, and we'll give Leo a $10 riding fee, and then would you be willing to stop and pick up Stacy and Dixon? And she'll get a $10 riding fee. So it's not that you're all going to get mileage to an event. It's the spirit official who has traveled the furthest to the event with the option of picking up other spirit officials along the way. So that's not mine and Vanessa's responsibility to say, hey, Angela, you're coming from Rio Rancho. Can you stop in Santa Fe and pick up Stacy? And then before you do that, can you pick up Janelle um, on the west side? So that's not our responsibility. We're just finding judges. It's up to you to work with the event organizer for those types of logistics. Most people say, Leo, what's the payment like? It's actually pretty sweet. For, doing, for judging a sport that you love, an all-day competition will get you $80. And in most cases, it's cash, so that's nice. A half-day competition for a tech judge. Oh, and that's for a tech judge. A half-day tech will receive $53. And an all-day performance judge will receive $69. And at a half-day, it's $45. And then please note that your mileage is 0 .0405 per mile round trip, but it must be 51 miles or further away from your event. the mileage, but they could opt to give you still the lunch fee. And so there's like a, a per diem for meals. That's a deal that you'd have to make with the event organizer. And in most cases, Melanie, people will say, um, you're more than welcome to have anything from the snack bar. We've got Frito pies, we've got hot dogs, nachos. A and in most cases, since it's a fundraiser, the school will try to feed you from their concession stand. But they're really good at doing that. Any other questions or comments? Is this information in the it is. This information is online, and at the end of the presentation, I'll show you where the link is, where you can find it. Vanessa and I have seen, and Keith has seen this too when we judge across the nation, our people will fly out from different states and get to an event and say, oh, I didn't bring any money. So the smart thing isn't to show up to a competition and expect that you're going to be paid right on the spot because in some cases it's a check that's mailed out to you. So don't show up to a competition thinking, well, I'm going to go with no money. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get paid. I'll get my mileage and I'll fill up with gas because in some cases it's sent to you. And that's right. And in some cases, it's months later. And so sometimes school offices are a little slow because then they have to send your W-9 to the central office. The administration office then sends it back to the school who says you're cleared. They then send the information for payment. So in cases where you're seeing that it's taking long to get paid, again, Vanessa and I are just the middlemen. It's up to you to work with the school or the host to ensure that payment is rendered. But if you're having, if it's two months later, and I get a call from Jamie who says, Leo, I still haven't received payment from that first competition I judged in October, and it's March, we'll then step in to help. Okay? A good judge is prepared, knowledgeable, and in knowledgeable we mean knowing the sport. Fair and consistent, so you're not going to pick your favorites and say, you know what, that team, I love them so much, I know they're going to win, because that doesn't happen. It's unbiased and professional at all times, and you provide useful feedback. So there's that theme on communication again. Communication is key. Vanessa has made a little bit of a change when it comes to judges at state competition in the fact that we used to ask that there be a comment for every single box, and it slowed things down. The new thing that we're adopting, and we're going to take into our state sanctioned competitions, is it's okay for you to only comment in areas where teams need improvement. So comments that's going to help the, the coach and the team. So you no longer have to find a comment for every single box, but you can comment in areas that need improvement, and Vanessa wants to follow up on this. So um, actually what is going to be happening um, that we're going to mention also at the focus corner um, 
was that um, if it's a 10 and you're scoring somewhere between 7 and 10, it's not necessary to put a comment in the box. If it's a 5 and you're going between 4 and 5, it's not necessary. Um, as Leo pointed out before, um, you know, you're having to put everything in the, um, in the box and you're commenting on it and it's slowing you down because you're also writing on your little, you know, paper that you have there trying to make sure that you go back and you put points for technique and all that. Well, if you're in that range, um, as I've stated to the uh, state officials, and that they're not going to put anything if you're anywhere from 7 to 10, 3 to 5, because it slows us down. Uh, Leo and I had a, a very difficult time at state because we got slowed down really, really bad because we want to move things quickly and, and stay on time. And because of that, they weren't able to put what they needed into the box and then the coaches were complaining. Well, we will let the coaches know that in that particular box, there may not be anything if this is the score. So it's not necessary if it's a five for you to put good because they know they got a five out of five. So therefore you must've been good because you got a five out of five. I'm from the old school in cheer, and Joey will remember this when we'd get the tape that would say, hi, this is Leo, and I'm the judge that's going to be watching. And so we don't have that capability anymore where we could do a play-by-play -play comment, so to speak, of your routine, but finding those key buzzwords or key terms that are going to help coaches, that's the communication you need, okay? You're all to submit an individual score sheet, and the reason why we put this on there is this isn't a group effort. This isn't for Janelle and I to sit by each other with Jamie and say, what did you guys think? Seven? Come on, it was a seven. Because then what happens is there's typically a strong personality who will change the score of someone else. And so typically what Keith and I do at the national level is if somebody starts talking, we nod our head and we don't even pay attention. We continue acting like we're doing our thing. Once we hit submit for that score sheet, we then say, what were you saying? <laughs> and we've made that part of our practice and then the only time I will chat with Keith when we're on the riser together is I'll say, Keith, was that full squad tumbling or did I miss a couple in the back? And Keith is good at telling me, Leo, that whole back row nuggeted. We call it a nugget when they hide. <laughs> and so <laughs> when we're trying to confirm something, we'll ask each other something. Keith, was that a score pull down or what happened? No, actually, I think that was supposed to be a scale. Then so trying to get confirmation from another judge is okay, but not discussing scores and what you think the score should be. I want to say that's usually what happens. Is did I miss a point in the counter? Did I, did I yeah. say that right? You know, uh, that kind of thing. That's usually yeah. what I have encountered. Yeah, Good. Because what we did, this goes way back to our first time. We had a judge who showed up with a rubric for everyone. And on the rubric, she was like, this is how you should use it. This is what you should do. And those are the types of personalities we try to have you as other judges say, that's okay. I've got this. I'm pretty good at doing this. I may think something is amazing. You may think it's not amazing. So just stay true to yourself. That's right. And back to Keith's point, I think what has helped me is staying consistent within yourself for each team. So Good point. if they're nailing a triple pulls up, good technique, and they're landing it solid, I know for me they're going to be in the you know, 7, 8, 9, or 8, 9, 10 score, whereas maybe a double where they're falling out of their turn is going to go a little lower. lower. Right. So that's consistent for me, and I don't I shared it with everybody now. <laughs> so she has her own but mental you, rubric. Yeah, you, you stay consistent within <coughs> your own scoring and your expectations within that score sheet and above and beyond the rules. That's a good point. And the one thing Keith and I have noticed too is we've noticed that schools across the country try to hit a, uh, a skill that's really advanced and they don't hit it. So there's five stunt groups, two are going to hit, three fall, and they expect for us to give full credit because all of them tried. We've now started to not give full credit when we're seeing well, that was a nice try, 
but you should really go back to basics before you try to get to that advanced skill. And I think that a lot of coaches and choreographers are thinking, well, if I throw this full up in and it might hit, it might not, well, if it's messy, you can start taking that down too, okay? So you can't just give credit to a skill that you thought they were going to hit, but make sure they hit that skill. Because then it's not fair to the school that hits solid skills, even if they're a little bit, not as advanced, but a little bit lower, because they all hit it, versus those that attempted and only two out of five hit. One thing that keeps coming in it, like I always say, consider simplifying your stunt sequence. Consider doing straight up libs instead of doing switch up libs because you, mm, you shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> so always just make sure you're saying consider doing something else to help your score and better your score. So the one issue I had at Espanola Valley High School is I came from a school that didn't have tumbling. So one thing that was frustrating from judges, a comment I always got was, um, I'd really love to see more tumbling. Well, so would I. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> but I'm giving you what I got. So I don't, when I judge, I don't write up the obvious. Okay. But I will write, if they did tumble, areas that they could improve with that tumbling because I make that assumption they're probably a coach like I did that you're putting out what you have and those that you don't have, of course, you're not showing it. With uh, technical judges, you're going to be given sheets as well. And so some people will tell me, wow, did you see how amazing that routine was? Well, Vanessa and I will say, no, we didn't, because we were looking at the hands the whole time to ensure that the hands were right. We were making sure the eyes were looking up to that spotter. So we don't see the routine. So the technical judge isn't there to look at the routine, but look at the technical aspects of that routine. So whether it's zooming in on those hands or looking to see if the eyes are in place, there's something that you have to do as a technical judge that's just as important, if not more important, than the performance judge because you're making sure that those kids are safe. And so Vanessa and I have worked events before at state where the state judge will start yelling in the headset, we got to stop this routine because it's so scary and dangerous that those kids look like someone's going to get hurt. And that's your job as a tech judge is making sure that if you see something that's really, really unsafe and you feel you got to stop that routine, you can. If not, if it's a tech deduction, make sure you write it on there and be consistent. I want to just say one comment is um, all of us, I'm sure, as tech judges have missed something. And so I'm going to say I've done it myself. And so what makes state different than a sanctioned event is there's one tech judge at a sanctioned event. Whereas at state you have two eyes from the front watching and the majority of the time the other two tech judges from the back watching. And so they're going to catch something because there's three additional tech judges at state than there are at a, at a home school event. Okay, so if you miss something, it happens. Don't beat yourself up, it happens. It's just that at state there's more techs than at a local competition. What we would ask you to do if you're a tech judge is if you miss something, Vanessa has come up with a rule that you then might want to tell the coach, I might have missed something in your routine. To be safe, would you mind sending a video of that to Vanessa for her to review? Or if you saw something and you're a new tech judge and you're not too sure on the rules, don't dock unless you know, but suggest to the coach that they send that video to Vanessa because Vanessa can trump any deduction at state. If it's been documented and it was performed the same way, Vanessa can take that tech deduction away. Yes, um, and in regards to um, what Leo stated, um, I was at a competition with Renee and um, I was just there to observe and there was a situation where a team continued falling and falling and you know um, they had to do the routine over because the girl we thought we didn't know how bad she was hurt but um, just you know an FYI especially to Renee because she was there at the time um, that's the time as Leo has stated that 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 it is okay for you to um, stop the competition at that. It's okay. But so now you know that it's okay at a competition to go ahead and stop it, you know, because we weren't sure how, um, what happened in the situation, if she was hurt really uh, badly or not. So, you know, make sure you just go ahead and you take that. And if you're not sure, as Leo has stated, just, you know, don't do the deduction if you're not sure on teching, you know. Um, it's very hard. The, the cheer teams are a lot larger than they used to be. So make sure that um, if you're not sure if you saw it, I'm not sure if that was under the foot, that hand was under the foot or not. You know, if you're not sure, then just don't do it. 
you know, and then when they get to state, They'll be questioning us mm -hmm. about it or whatever. But if you weren't sure, and Renee is very good about that. I'm not just trying to, you know, just because her and I communicate a lot. Mm -hmm. But she um, contacts me and, you know, and lets me know what happened in a situation and was that okay. And she tells me the name of the team. And so, therefore, I can contact the team and I can let them know, you know, what she told me. So don't be afraid, you know, as Leora stated, to go ahead and contact me. FYI, go to the website. I have retired from high school. <laughs> 40 years at my high school, I am done. So if you go to the website, I have a new email. My phone number is the same, but please make sure you contact me and let me know so I can check. Also, make sure you're progressing fundamentals with a lot of these teams because a lot of them do skills they shouldn't be doing in the first place. So just make sure you're stressing work and perfect the fundamentals of your stunts, even in dancing also. So it should be the coach who would be able to say, stop. But if I had my team and that music stopped, I would then yell, five, six, seven, eight, and come on, help me out. Okay, so a coach should be smart enough to know that you don't leave your kids for 11 minutes out there. And the school wouldn't, because the school, to them, uh, a lib, a uh, high V, a pencil turn, and a pirouette all look the same to them right? They don't know what's happening. And the same thing with the routine. They wouldn't know to pull them, but the coach needs to be smart enough to know what to do with that team. Okay? Um, the other thing is, is that remember that um, middle schools have a um, different rule, and um, we're not remembering that. So if you're teching, um, I know that Hope does a huge uh, competition. So you may be judging high school or teching high school at that point because it's more important for the tech judge at this point. So you need to make sure that they are following uh, the middle school rules. I also do middle school rules, so you can contact me on that, but they are not to be violating any of those rules, and could they know. Could you send a link to the middle school rules so everyone can see them? Um, it, it actually, if you go to the website and you click on middle schools, it's there. It's there, yes. It's there, and it says where you need to look for that middle school. Jamie's correct. It is there. The other thing is, is that the new rule book that um, you'll be getting, please, please make sure that you read it this year. Uh, Leo and I have been discussing the rule book, especially for tech judges. You will be receiving a new tech sheet that we are in the process of, of putting together um, because it will be less complicated to use this tech sheet. But um, it is now cheer, and then it's dance. So if you violate a stunt rule and it's 2.51, then, you know, before when you were dancing, um, if you did something that was uh, arms extended, then you went back to the stunt rule and used it underneath cheer. There is now the ruling for dance and it's like a four point whatever. So y it's totally different. So those of you who get a cheat sheet this year, you will remember, make sure you look at it very closely, because like Leo said, we remember on page 13 and two point, we know that. Well, when it comes to dance, it is not that anymore. It changes to a new rule. So please make sure that you uh, look at that. When do you get the books? Um, well, books just came in, so if you paid for a official's registration, then they will mail you a book. Okay, <laughs> you know, and, and, and you know, that's a rule. We don't do all-stars, you know, um, we only deal with the schools. So all-stars are, you know, that's maybe Keith can answer in regards to doing all-stars because, you know, Leo judges all-stars too. But as far as judging all-stars, that's not our thing because, as you said, in ACA, there are all-star rules. But still, they have to follow federation rules. But we don't do all stars. I just have a two-line question. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you can go to the USASF.net and find the score sheets on how to score All Star properly. Also, Varsity has um, a link. Also, you can look at. What do you mean, my sixth grader can't double down? <laughs> That's what I mean. Your sixth grader can't double down. <laughs> I know. I remember that. Here are things while well, judging what you need to remember. Okay, and it's it's hard because we know each other. And so people who have judged for a long time are going to know what I mean when coaches are going to recognize you, fans might recognize you, and it's really hard when they're trying to talk to you and wave or call you over. It's important that you don't go over because then the assumption is you've helped that team win. And so I'm going to give an example. Another personal example is we cheered with a girl named Jamie Wilson. Jamie Wilson always had competitive cheer teams in the state of New Mexico. So when you see a good friend and you haven't seen each other for a while, it's the total New Mexican thing. I'm going to run up to her. I'm going to hug her tight. I'm going to ask how she's doing. She's going to whisper in my ear, I'm doing great. What's new with you? I'm going to whisper back because it's loud. We're going to hold hands and look at each other and hug one more time <laughs> and walk away. And so my first year judging, I did that with everyone I saw. Well, then a red flag came up where they said Leo cheated for Jamie because they cheered together in high school. And my team was a lot better than Jamie's team, but since they're old college teammates, Jamie's team won. So I've made it a rule, and we're asking that you make it a rule that you don't interact with um, the team, with coaches, or with fans, because they're always going to somehow find a link back and how you've helped them win. I don't see you, I don't see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another thing is make sure not to text and stay off of your cell phone, which is sometimes hard because I use my cell phone sometimes as the timer if there's not a timer. But if people see that you're timing and doing that consistently with every team, you should be okay. But the best case scenario is when you're in contact with the host to ask if they have a stopwatch you can use, and typically they'll say, oh yeah, the track coach has one, let me go get it. I've also used my cell phone in school at Taco, if I'm not certain about something, and their school marks the rules. Okay. So the, so the rule of thumb, though, is not to text or answer your phone. Hey, girl, hold up. Let me put you on speaker. I'm judging real <laughs> quick. <laughs> so the rule is to just leave it alone. Leave the facility as soon as you can. And the reason being, yes, <laughs> you'll be... Yeah, you'll be bombarded with questions. And so that's happened to our dance coaches before. And so dance judges, I mean, have been there, and then they're questioned, and they're questioned. Well, they really don't remember because they judged that sheet and sent it. And then you shouldn't have to justify how you scored a team to parents who are asking. So the rule of thumb is to leave the facility as soon as you're done judging get the clear from the event host just in case they, they need clarification, but get out of there. Plus you beat the parking, I mean the, the parking lot mess. Uh, so that's good. Because I know the first competition we judged, uh, we had a team in high school, and they just had so nicely organized the place they set it up and all after we finished, then they escorted us out and told us go ahead, we're gonna do great. It was so nice. And then there were other places where we were and it was just like they were too wrapped in trying to say we leave, we were locked out that door. <laughs> So can kind of see us out we'll do that. We'll do that. So when I, when I do the introduction of who the judges are with the host, I'll ask if they can come up with a plan on getting you out before the masses get out. So if you go to Gallup, they <laughs> expect you to hand out the awards. Yes, all of them. Like the draw. Yeah. And you're like, we don't really want to do that. And that's okay if you tell them that you don't want to. And, and in, in that conversation with the yeah, event judges, exactly. you can say that. So the one thing I do want to say is Aztec High School does ask for their cheer competition that judges stay, but it's a good reason why they stay. So you meet with each school, each squad and the coach after that competition, and you can tell them why they scored the way they did. And they listen, and the kids are excited because they hear the feedback. And then the kids sometimes ask questions and say, well, do you think if we... And I could say, well, I think, but what does your coach think? So never answer questions on when they ask, do you think we should? Because then what happens at state is they say, 
Joey told me if we added libs, we'd take first next time. <laughs> and, we, and he said it. And so <laughs> avoid the should we. Just make those comments your suggestions, but when they start asking what else they should add or what you think should be in their choreography, avoid it because then you're to blame when they don't get that first place trophy the next time. Okay? You're going to be part of a panel. There's some of our competitions that are so large that there's two panels, a panel A and a panel B. There's three cheer, three dance judges per panel, and one tech judge per panel. So if there's two panels, it's impossible for there to just be one tech judge. Because if there was a tech deduction that happened with panel A, it's going to be hard to try to go to panel B when you haven't even finished writing the deduction for panel A. So we're going to go ahead and communicate that with our event host that if there are two panels, there needs to be two tech judges. So what Vanessa's and I rule of thumb is, is one year separation from the team. So that first year I judged was the first year I left Espanola. So if I knew Espanola Valley High School was going to be there, I stepped away for one full year. And then that second year I judged, but you're still going to get that you cheated for them. And so you're going to get it no matter what. And I get it because Melanie will know I was at every school practically. I was around the state, so I hear it all the time. You helped your friend Lisa at Taos High School. That's why they won. Well, the truth is I didn't even help Taos. I haven't even seen Taos. It's just they're always going to make the association with you with people and assumed that you helped them. So there's no avoiding it either way. So one year separation and then going back to that. The one thing that Vanessa and I did want to talk about with panels is if you're assigned a panel, you're not allowed to remove yourself from a panel. So we had an instance at a competition where a woman wanted to be with her friend, so she decided she would scratch out her panel, write in a different panel, and switch with someone. Well, then it caused an issue because the panel she was on, she was now judging her daughter who was on a team on the same panel she was judging. So when things are set up by a, uh, the event organizer, it's okay. But just make sure, if you were to tell them we're going to switch, just to make sure that they're okay with the switch. Let them know why you want to switch. Man, you know, I'm new to judging, and I really, really want to sit by hope. She could offer some guidance in case I miss something. Would you mind? And in most cases, they're really good at that. Um, you'll always see these teams throughout the year. And one thing that we've heard complaints about are, I don't think your judges know what they're doing because so-and-so high school wins every single competition. But judges, do, you do know what you're doing. Because if you look at the results from our state competition, those teams ranked in the same order at state as they ranked all year at your sanctioned competition. So just stay positive in what you're doing. You're going to see that some teams might win all the time, but it's, you're following that score sheet and you're using your judgment. In no way are you being biased. So, and, and so Vanessa and I talked about that. We talked about how we saw that schools who complained that a certain school won all the time, well, when you look at those state score sheets, they kind of averaged out the way it did throughout the entire year at our sanctioned events. And so the one thing I'm going to say is that's a good point, and a good point or a piggyback off of that, if I saw St. Mike's High School doing something amazing two weeks ago, and then this next week they weren't as good, I can't judge them on what I remembered two weeks ago. I got to judge on what's happening right then, okay? Because it's only fair for every team there, and that's something you need to do as a judge. So it all depends. So you might have a small school like... Um, <laughs> You might have a small school down south where there's three teams, and so it took you longer to drive from Albuquerque to the school than the competition, but there might be some where you're there for six hours, like Hope High School or the UNM competition. Yep, or more. And 
Yeah. So there's no real number of panels. You can't cap. It can go on all day, all night. <laughs> Well, and a tech judge can dock if they think it was an, an inappropriate move. So if it's something that looked completely inappropriate, Vanessa and I have docked before on moves that were inappropriate and music that was inappropriate. Just because some people are allowed to say the B word on TV doesn't mean we want to hear it in your routine. And so as the tech judge, there's a section in the book where you can dock for inappropriate um, comments in the music or inappropriate moves throughout the routine. And the same goes with even uniforms and dance if they're inappropriate. So when it comes to the spinning around and doing things, that's the style of the coach and it might be a style of someone else. And I think that it's fair to say that you're okay to judge the way you think that routine should have looked like. So there's no right or wrong answer for you on how you should judge that, but how you feel it should be judged. And so that's what makes cheer and dance real interesting is we're subjective. So Keith loves that show spin. She spun around. She did something amazing. He'll start yelling, twirl, girl, twirl. <laughs> and he loves that. And so Keith loves that all-star look, whereas I come from a more tight, cheer, I'm going to transition, I'm going to hit hard, I'm going to do a double time the cross at St. Pius, and I'm going to move on. <laughs> and so what happens is um, we have different styles, but it doesn't make it right or wrong. It's what your, it's your score's not right or wrong, it's based on what you feel that team earned. want to judge it from a creativity aspect of it and then judge it from a technical aspect. If it looks a mess, then say, clean it up. If it was more creative, it's a creative piece, but it's the execution of the piece. So that's how you want to judge it. It didn't meet any of the categories in the floor plan. And we felt bad because it's like you want, it's not the, the dancer's fault per se. Um, what is your thought if this happens again? We reached out to the performance, um, uh, the uh, performers, mm -hmm. and said, how do you want us to do this? Do you want it? Because I mean, a lot of the categories were going to be heroes. And we knew <laughs> it was going to cause a big issue. A and we did. We, they screwed it up for sure. As far as this year is concerned, um, we, you know, Leo and I will get together, but we need to make sure that the event coordinator understands that everybody needs to, um, the dance people need to be listed um, in a category as far as it's hip hop, jazz, military, whatever it happens to be, that has to be done. That is a definite. Um, just like you said, if you don't know, then um, this is what happens. Um, at the coaches clinic, we will be talking because there is going to be a possible change for um, 
1718, right? Okay, 17, I just retired. 1718, there's going to be a, um, a difference if, depending on um, how it's voted on. So uh, that will uh, eliminate any of this that you're talking about at this point. The other thing in regards to um, your situation is that um, you have to remember that um, as a performance judge, you're judging performance. So you comment, however, um, as Keith stated, in regards to your creativity or whatever. Please make sure that on performance that you are not tip judging someone on your performance sheet. That is not your job. It is not your job to say that that's very unsportsmanlike and it look really nasty or inappropriate or whatever. That is up to the tech judge to decide. Tech judges also need to remember that it is okay to give a warning. It's okay to give a warning if it looks like, you know what, if they would have just moved that hand a little bit to the right, that would have been okay. Or if they would have kept that head up a little bit longer looking at that stunt, that would have been okay. It's okay to give a warning. You don't always have to do a deduction on someone. If you do a deduction, make sure you know it's a deduction for sure. That's what, because you're, you're doing performance, so that's fine. Now, if someone tosses it up and they happen to uh, step on it, then it becomes a tech issue. Or if it hits somebody in the head, it comes on in the face mm -hmm. in the middle of when they're doing a certain part of the routine, then that could also become a tech deduction. So it's okay. The tech people know when to get on that palm issue. And um, the performance people should know what they need to do for performance. I mean, we had requirements at one time for palm tosses, and everybody hated it, and everybody does them. So it's up to you. So, so one comment you could make, Joey, is really work on ensuring that those cheerleaders catch those pumps. And I'm going to give you an example is, is Taos High School again. So through those pom-poms with colors that were visual with that cheer, where I thought, wow, that looked amazing. So if I would have told them at the beginning, think about dropping, not tossing those pumps, it would have taken away their effect. But throwing those pom-poms with their colors, and when they caught them, it was huge. So maybe a better comment, instead of pulling them, is ensure that you work at practice on ensuring that those cheerleaders catch those pumps, okay? Because it's a nice visual element, so you might not want to pull it, but tell them what to do to make sure that they catch them. Anyone else? No, you'll judge. So if you're cheer only, you're cheer. Okay. We have had an incident since, Melanie, where someone will say, Leo, no one is coming to our competition that's a, a dance judge. What do we do? And I have two dance teams. So what Vanessa and I typically do is we contact Sally Marcus and we'll say, Sally, what do we do? There's two dance teams. It's the last competition to get them sanctioned. Because, Melanie, before when you cheered, everyone went to state. The difference is now you have to compete at least three times in an NMAA sanctioned event to qualify for state. So Vanessa and I track that with every school that's gone to every competition. We could then tell Sally, Sally, listen, um, these two high schools, Roswell High School and Clovis High School just need this one last competition. What should we do? She'll say, tell the cheer judges that will make a waiver for them to judge dance. And in some cases, those cheer judges say, Leo, I really don't want to. And I'll say, and I understand. But then I'll tell them it's the only way they'll qualify to get to state. And the, the coaches know that you're cheer judges, but they need this competition to get there. In that case, what we typically try to do is just say, give it that old college <laughs> try. <laughs> <and> <laughs> what I've you done here in the past is I just look at the overall picture because you know what looks good and what doesn't, even though it's on the cheer side. So, like, I will comment on formation based on good things, or yeah, it's, I, I don't, I stay away from whether it's a sweat day or whatever you guys do. <laughs> <laughs> I hope somebody else in the comments has some kind of 
<laughs> so, <laughs> but in cases, in cases when this happens, we tell the coach, listen, this is what's happening, but we know you need this event to qualify. We're going to pull the cheer judges in to help. And, and, you know, you've cheered and you were really good at it, so you know when synchronization is off. You know when a formation isn't quite right. You know when a transition is sloppy. So those basic things that happen in cheer are still those basic things that happen in dance. Well so you'd be okay. Yeah. Arms that are crossed. Yeah, same thing. And so consistent. Yeah. So you only have five minutes to record your scores. So and that's really hard. So make sure that you're quick because when you start slowing down, you start slowing down the event organizers. Um, timing sheet that she has for parents or that he has for parents on um, getting those little schools back if they traveled 200 miles to the event. Make sure you stay on time. And I'm always like that parent when I judge it. I'll say, did you guys use a restroom? Do you need the restroom? You got to go now. <laughs> because there's no time for you to stop the competition midway through and say, Leo, I really have got to go. Well, you're really not going to go right now. <laughs> you got to hold it. <laughs> so you got to make sure that you keep moving quick, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Write as many brief comments as you can. There's my communication theme again, because remember, ultimately, we're helping these teams on their journey for a state championship, okay? So comments that are going to help them, not comments that are going to tear them down, okay? Not anything rude that's going to really make a team feel that, well, you know, we tried for six months, and that was our best, and now you're telling us we didn't look so good. So comments that are going to build them up. And so I'm going to tell you just a side story, if you don't mind. So Keith has taught across the country. And so the fun thing as me as a judge is to see my friends come out with their team. And I remember that Keith, he doesn't warm up his team in the back room. They have a dance party. The music comes on, and they dance like no one's business. And the team behind them is thinking, what the heck is this man doing? <laughs> it's a revival. They're jumping around. They're dancing. And then when they come out, they do that, their thing. And so... You don't judge a team based on what they're going to do before they hit that mat, okay? So if that team is doing a little chant or dancing around, you can't say, wow, I really hated that little dance before you hit the mat. Your judging time happens when they hit that mat. So it's fun to see Keith do his things with his team, and it's exciting, and you want to be part of it, but you don't judge that portion of what he's doing until his team gets on the mat. Finish your score sheet rapidly so again. Sure. So what happens if they start tumbling off the floor and falling on the mat? Like what's their advice? So Vanessa and I, if it's, if it's sequenced, if it looks like if it's a sequenced tumble on, we'll start that timer. Right? And in some cases, if somebody does, um, let's go Big Red Roswell Coyotes, we'll have started it because it's a unified cheer. And then it's going to take them over. So be real aware that it doesn't look like it's unified. There's no rules on entrance. And so you can enter any way you want, but if it looks like it's unified and it was choreographed, we'll start the timer. Nope. Nope. Because your judging starts when you're on that mat and your music starts or your cheer starts. There's one side comment I want to talk about starting time too. So if you start a time as a tech judge and that routine starts going and the coach tells you stop it and start all over, you can't do that. So if a crowd is going completely wild for a team that's gone on the floor and that cheer team does their ready, one, two, and the crowd is still going wild that half the team didn't hear it, 
we can't stop that clock to let you start all over again. Because then it's not fair for every other team who might have not started the way they wanted to have started. So once you hear that unified cheer, that music start, you go, you don't stop it and let them start all over again. Coaches try to do something where they say, Leo, can we just go again at the end of the competition? That wasn't our best. You can't do that either. Because then everybody would want to go at least twice through, right? that when they um, get on the floor, if it's all that noise that's going on, then they need to wait, and then they need to go ahead and start their cheer or their dance, you know, but they need to wait. You know, if they decide to go ahead when all the noise is going on and they can't hear because it was a big issue, it's not our fault. your job. It, at state competition, it is our job to say whether we feel Leo's on the floor and he's closer than I am, and so I communicate with him to find out, is it necessary for us to let them go again? Uh, Jeremy, the young man who was in here who does the music, was it, was it your fault on the music? Because we always make sure that there's a team member next to him. So we coordinate that, and that's up to the event coordinator to decide. It's not up to the judges whether someone goes again. If they tell you someone's going to go again, they're going to go again, and you just got to be ready. Hand it back to them. <laughs> if, if that's the case, hand it back to them, because you don't want to be accused of helping that team again. So tell the event organizer, it's up to you. We'll do whatever you need us to do. But one rule of thumb Vanessa and I have is we're always in constant contact at state. And she'll say, Leo, what's going on? Leo, what's going on? Leo, what's going on? I'm checking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll first start off with the guy who does music. And so tech judges, you could do this. Is there something wrong with their music or something wrong with your equipment? And in most cases, it's a scared freshman whose hand is shaking that they forgot to put their phone on airplane mode and text messages are coming in. And so if it's a way you can help fix that, you can. Or if not, just say, if your music isn't playing, you've got an option, you can count it out. Okay, so tech judges, it's up to you because you're closest to the music and you're closest to the floor with the coach that you can go and, and talk to them. That happened with Kayla's team this last year. I think her music stopped and so instead of standing there, she counted five, six, seven, eight. All the kids started clapping and the crowd went crazy. Halfway through, the music came on again. Yeah, music is like counting fast. They'll count fast. <laughs> <laughs> And then it catches up. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> With the tricks of the trade, it's going to be Keith that's going to jump in a lot on this because he's been on the national circuit a lot longer than I have, okay? And so Keith will jump in. But what we would recommend is that you bring your own notebook if you can because in some cases the event organizer is so busy they're going to forget to give you a notebook or there's just not going to be one in your packet. What I've noticed what's good with dance judges is they have their own kind of shorthand that I don't even know what they're doing. <laughs> and so they're marking up these things and I'm like, what is that? Oh, that was a full squad double. Or you can come up with your own shorthand if you want to too. You don't have to write out everything real neat because these notes aren't gonna go to anyone. They're just gonna be for your benefit when you transfer those scores and your comments onto that score sheet. Don't you find the rhythm also you can, you'll learn how to write and watch while you're they're judging. And just write and watch and critique the whole time.
so if you guys could do us a favor, and when you establish um, communication with the event organizer, if you could ask, could you help us out and please have the names written on the score sheet? If you can help us out with that piece, because now it's, we could still list it on the website, but a lot of these event organizers have been hosting events for the past several years, and so they're not even looking at the check sheet anymore, the checklist. But if you can do that, that would help us out as well. Um, what I like to do with my notes page is I do three lines. My top section is always going to be stunts. My middle section is going to be dance, and my bottom section is going to be tumbling. And then randomly off to the side anywhere, I'll write anything on transitions or dance, um, energy. But typically, I break it up into three chunks on my notebook, and I know where to write what's happening. Stay away from obvious comments. Um, miss stunt on the left. I know. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Make suggestions of different things to incorporate in a routine that would assist the coach and the teams. So for example, um, we notice a lot of co-ed teams, the boys take a knee or just stand there. You might say incorporate motions to dance for boys in the back or think about maybe having the boys, yeah, have a basket or use flags in the back. Something that's going to help the routine out, okay? So hers was talking about music that might be slow. A comment I might make are counts seem slow. Faster counts might make the routine flow better. So a positive comment where yet I'm getting my point across, but it's positive. Because we've had a judge before that wrote, your, mu your music was horrible. But horrible to who? Because I might have liked that music. So it's based on what that choreographer liked, what that team was feeling. So instead of saying your music was horrible, try to think of a nice way to tell them. It might be... Um, Sound effects were, were really loud in your music, which took away from that flow of the routine. So something that's going to be a little bit more positive. Now, the thing is on Leo. Remember that on the, uh, the Leo set, not to mark down, um, if you're, um, you know, I know if the person on the left fell or whatever. Or now, when it comes to check judging, it's important that you let them know which side that the infraction in occurred. Um, we get that a lot. I have to call Leo once again. Leo. Hurry up, answer me, answer me. So uh, I want to know, did you see, was it the person right or left? Because the minute that the coach comes up to the top to talk to me about a rule infraction, they're going to want to know. They're going to say, no, that didn't happen. And then Leo's like, Leo's like, yes, it did. It was the person on the left, Vanessa, and this is what happened. And so I don't even have to talk to the, or interfere with the head tech judges or the, the main tech judges because Leo's down there and he's looking also so he can relay back to me. Now you don't have that advantage in sanction events, but if you're getting ready to write the infraction, please make sure whether you know if it was the center person, you know, right, left, or whatever it happens to be because that's the question that you're going to get asked. And, and tech people should have that note there too because that's where you're It's also always good to have notes because if someone wants to question why you scored the team the way that you scored them. Like say, for instance, they did three triple, job, triple jumps to a tuck, but not everyone did those triple tucks to a jump. But their coach is like, I should have scored higher. Well, no, my notes say that you did this, this, and this. So it's always good to have a documentation of what you saw and what you've seen at the time. And don't get bullied by a parent who accompanies the coach who says, I've got it on my iPod right here. Do you want to see it again? No, I don't. Re don't feel that you have to, you don't review. So if you march something, go with your judgment, you saw it, go with it. Don't be bullied into reviewing and trying to change or persuade you that it was something different. So the performance would then look at the overall effect of the routine, right? So they would see that in there, or um, it gets tricky because then coaches will say, oh, she just cradled early. 
well, that wasn't a cradle, because you can mark it on there. So you don't have to say, oh, you missed the stunt on the left, but when you're looking at the overall routine, you can remember that. On your notes, you can jot that, not on their notes, but you can then lower that score if you want to, because not every stunt hit in that stunt sequence. Exactly. If you didn't see it, don't guess that you saw it. When I coached, I remember someone said, nice back tuck. Wow, we had a back tuck. <laughs> 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 we had two janky back handsprings, but I'll take that back tuck. <laughs> Make sure that you don't guess. If you're not too sure that it happened, don't write it. Because then later it's going to make you look bad. You're going to lose credibility because they're going to say, Annalise thought that we did a tuck in that routine. She wasn't even watching. So if you didn't see it, and that's when you can say, hey, did you by any chance see the tuck in that routine? Then someone would say, yeah, there were two of them. They were both on the end. But if you're going to guess, don't guess and mark something in there. Just skip it. Don't let other judges pressure you. We've talked about that. Know the sport. And so it's being uh, increasingly difficult is a generation gap that we're seeing that some people don't know the latest terms in a sport. And so, and it could be an issue too where we pull cheer judges and ask them to do a dance uh, competition where you wouldn't know what the technical terms are that our dance judges up here know. And so don't use social media, okay? It's not a time for you to comment or blog about teams in an event because you need to remember you're that independent contractor. So remember that you don't go on social media, you don't go on a blog and give a play-by-play -play what happened and then give what your opinion was about different teams. What's important is that you steer clear. The one thing I do do to try to help the event organizer is I'll take a picture of the school and I'll say, um, great day to judge at St. Pius High School. Come and join us today at 9 a.m. And so in no way do I comment unless I say, wow, all the teams in the north at the Aztec competition did an awesome job, looking good. But I'm not going to give a play-by-play -play of what happened or my assumption of what was happening. Just steer clear because there's people always linked since we're a small community where it comes back it then goes to Sally, and then Sally will then contact the official with us to question why it happened. And, so, and, uh, and that's tough because we're now in an age where this generation wants to stay connected and wants to give feedback, but in cases like this, steer clear. That's the best thing to do. Uh, dress business casual, don't show up like you just got home from the club. Okay. <laughs> Walking in with those tight jeans, your little low cut blouse and high heels, Strut in your thing. Make sure that you look business professional and you're ready. So Vanessa tried with polos to identify us as spirit officials. And in some cases, we had some people who ordered the polo that didn't get to them, or we had people who lost their polo. And so what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to just get that email list of our officials and then send out the link. Instead of, because it was really, really... It wasn't communicable. Well. That's right. And it was the first year you got to remember that. So when we start to see that it's happening, more people will. Well, and, and here's another thing that it's not that they didn't bother. What happened this past year, too, is we had people who we didn't expect everybody to come to the training last year. And so we could have sent the information out. So somebody judged, let's say, nine years and they were on a national committee. We didn't make them do the training, so they, they would say they didn't know. And in some cases, I was given the green light by Sally to pull kids that I've coached before to plug into events where we had no one who was going to show up. So like those people wouldn't have had the polo or even bothered buying it because they judged maybe once a year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Game day is going to look a lot different in the state of New Mexico this year. Game day is completely revamped. And game day is going to reflect what it looks like on the national level. And Keith will talk about what he sees when he judges game day for varsity or when he does game day. So I don't specialize in game day as a judge. So that's why Keith can jump in on this. So each team is going to be brought out the way you brought out every team before at state. And now performing the 
La Cueva High School Bears. They're still going to be out there, but it's going to be a little different this time, whereas now there's three sections in game day. Band dance, crowd leading, and the fight song section. It's going to be done via a announcement. So it's going to be different in the sense that it's going to be narrated, okay? So you're going to need somebody who's going to have your iPod or your phone loaded with your band, your band dance and your fight song. Because what happens is the announcer could say, Santa Fe High School, it's first and ten, and your football team needs to get that first down. Your team then needs to know what is happening in a game day situation. So then your cheer team, without you out there yelling at them, will have to then start that cheer on for that first and ten. So they could yell, first and ten, do it again, move that ball. So it becomes a sideline like you were at a game. Or they could say, Bernalillo High School, your band is going to strike up the fight song. The fight song then starts and your kids need to go for it. Then, they could then say, Las Cruces High School, there's a timeout, and your band is going to play the Hey Song, or whatever song you have. I, and, and I'm not, it's not verbatim what I'm saying, what the announcer's going to say, but then that Hey Song would play, and your kids need to do that Hey Song. And so it's the band dance section, crowd leading section, fight song section, and I'm going to show a YouTube video in a while that's an example of that, Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 the only thing that you're not allowed to pick is, um, you know, whatever sight line it happens to be. You're not allowed to do that. That will come strictly from the announcer. And so as you're going to watch the YouTube, it may s seem like a lot of um, – Football, because uh, Varsity um, did it, and they do a lot of football. But we have decided, the NMA has decided, that we will be doing, like, basketball will be in ours, too. So it'll be basketball. It, it just won't be football. But we have a script, so it may be that Belen's out there, and they may have to do um, that, you know, they just scored a touchdown, and then you'll have to chant then it may be La Cueva, and now all of a sudden there's maybe, now you'll be shooting a, a free throw, you just got fouled. So they won't know that part coming. You will know the other part, which, as Leo stated, Keith could expl explain to you better, because we're just getting used to game day. We have just reviewed it, and we are lost like you are a little <laughs> bit. But we are, we are trying to figure it out, and we study, I guarantee you, every day trying to figure out game day. What to expect in a game day situation? Because um, there's teams that are out there who don't even cheer anymore, who hang out at a game, at a basketball game, and their focus has become going to a competition and competing. This takes us back to that basics that you're there to support a team too. And so you gotta know what's the difference between defense and offense and what to do during a game day situation. So Coach, you're not a coaching team. They should be able to catch anything at any time. So as a judge, all you're doing is really judging what they're doing. Right. Sorry, I'm taking you more on the coach mode right now. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's not that so serious. If they say there is a, there's five different offenses cheering for this one squad to win, no. Right. Who's, who are the captain will start right, it. The, the actual cheer captain on the team will start it. Or the leader, whoever yeah. the captain is. As somebody who coached before, what I would say is I would say, okay, you guys, when we go to state, this is the basketball offense cheer we're going to do, and this is the basketball defense cheer we're going to do. This is going to be the football defense or the football option, and then when I coach those kids and work with them at practice, I'll focus on those. And then if they say, Leo, how do we know your swim team is about to, I'd be like, just forget it and <laughs> smile and wave. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah. Okay, we've already been approached with higher health tax plans at my school. We've already been approached with that. So we're on top of that, and we know what to do because they don't have a fight plan. We're already ready for that. There are guidelines that go out. As you notice on the NMA website, there's guidelines. Those guidelines will be on there for game day, so coaches will not be alarmed. Plus, at Coaches Clinic, it's going to be live. So they will see a live version of what's going to happen. But as Leo stated, it's very simple. I know it sounds complicated, but if you're a good coach and you have been out there coaching, uh, your kids go to all the basketball games or the majority or all the football, then you know what to do. You know what to do. You teach your kids that, uh, you know, it's a defense, so don't be saying score now because, uh, you know, we're on the defense. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. So it's just, <laughs> actually, it's just bringing things back to old school. It's, 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 that's where it should be, and that's what we want to do. We want to make sure we're back to old school. And it's really easy to judge. Projection, communication, visuals, did the team lead you, did you get excited? It's basic stuff. The only thing that's a little bit different, and we just tell you, is that it will be for the timing of the timer. And that part will be on there, too, because as you see how it's broken down, you know, as long as you get through that time, that will be the part. Huh? So we're going to go over that quickly now to yeah. the problem time. Is there two more comments that then we're going to go to the next one? So then that's where I would throw up my EVHS red, gold, something that I know could be any way that's still those props, universal. But then it, it's going to be the coach's responsibility to know what to take to state and be prepared for at state. So not take every single prop and then say, okay, go and get that prop because you won't have time. One more comment. The only competition we will not do the game day at is halftime hoorah because there's no time for that in between state basketball games uh, for those halftimes. They still could, which would be this game day, where you could get them the generic fight song, you could find a generic fight song to use, and then do the same game day stuff. Yeah. The UNM fight song, if they let you, yeah. Cheer with music is still <laughs> mandatory for everyone. And so to compete at state, you have to do both game day and cheer with music. At a sanctioned competition, you can do either one or you can do both if the coach chooses to. And so all of you know that cheer with music, it's still that same um, format we've had for years where it's a cheer and it's music for one minute, 30 seconds. And there's no formal layout on how that is. So you don't have to have your cheer in between your section A of music and your section B. A team could opt to start off with their cheer and then do the minute 30 of music after or uh, vice versa. And so as a, as a judge, you don't take points away for the way they lay out their routine, but just what's happening in that routine. The score sheets, you got a copy of those for you to review, and you're looking at those now. Um, let, do you mind if we do a game day review at the end while I talk about dance really quick? Dance is, um, their version of game day is a palm routine, and so it's every dance team in New Mexico at state must compete with a palm routine, so that's kind of like game day for us. Um, Palms must be used at least 80% of the time in the routine, and then when you ask, well, who's counting if it's 80%? Typically, it's the tech judge who will see and then make comments if that didn't happen. As a performance judge, you just judge the routine. There's no props. Um, it's traditional palm that's tight, synchronization, visual effects, and making sure that their motions are placed right. We have military still in the state, which all of you know. Um, they come from St. Pius High School, where we used to see those Dorados every time do their thing. It's still those sharp motions, formations, and visual effects. You got your jazz routine, so jazz looks at synchronization, 
choreography, technique, and execution. Jazz is where you're going to see a lot of those leaps and a lot more technical things happening is, is our jazz teams. Hip hop is that fun routine where it's that street style routine, which is harder for me to judge because you want to make sure that levels look the same, motions are executed the same. And what's hard about hip hop, if it's not a motion where things hit completely, it could be something funky. So looking to make sure that it looks in sync and the emphasis is on execution and style. You have the dance score sheet that you're going to look at. I think there's a little bit of a modification on that score sheet, whereas um, we did a better job of wording and categories within the different sections. So we did uh, change it just a little bit. It's really not changed. As you notice on the score sheet, and I'm going to move quickly here, so if you have any questions in regards to dance uh, score sheet, you can talk to me afterwards. But as you see um, on the five, we changed it from... Um, the four point, the four E points to the 50, uh, the choreography, we put the difficulty underneath. Um, the wording is different for clarification, which uh, those of you who are dance coaches, you will notice that this is a much, much better score sheet. It actually tells you um, what you're judging on and what you're looking for. Uh, the execution, um, like underneath movements, it's not limited to leaps, jumps, tricks, kicks, all that kind of stuff. It makes it a lot easier. And um, as a dance coach, like I said, you totally understand. And we did overall effect as a, um, and moved up the projection and sportsmanship. We put it underneath execution and technique. So therefore you are judging with execution and technique, the sportsmanship, all of that is being done. So that, it's not that it's um, different things like game day is like totally a revamp. On this, all we did was move it to a different section where it should be judged at. Um, this was done during the state competition because people got very confused and they were putting the points and the comments um, in the wrong place because of the fact that it, it wasn't listed on there. So we listed it so you can understand where the points need to go. So um, I'm sure some of you dance people have looked at it and you understand that it is a very good score sheet. It's much better than it's been in the past. Thank you. So just to end, we're going to end with the game day video, but the one thing I want you to remember is, is I'm very thankful for all of you. Because without you, as somebody who's been a former cheerleader, somebody who's been a former coach, and somebody who now helps with judges, is this is, you have a tremendous impact on our student athletes. And if I don't thank you throughout the year, I want to thank you right now because it's because of you that these kids get to state. It's because of your comments that they continuously improve throughout the year, and all of you are going to have a tremendous impact, and for that I am very, very thankful. And so what you're going to notice is sometimes I send emails to everyone that sounds like if I'm the bad Leo Haramio pointing my finger at you, but it's just because sometimes there's constant themes that we hear from different competitions, and what Vanessa and I will do is we'll draft up an email that will identify that common theme and then kind of tell you what we're hearing out on the street because we're not at every competition and ways that we think we can remedy what the perception is or what's really happening. What will happen is I'll send out a call out to spirit officials, the date and location of a competition three to four weeks before it happens. Some people have said, Leo, why don't you just give us the schedule at the start of the year? But what happens that we when we did that or had thought about doing that is we were afraid people were either not going to write it down a, on a calendar or completely forget about it. But what I'm going to do this year is I'm going to ask, I'm going to send out a call out with every competition and then I'm still going to send a reminder three to four weeks before. So I'm going to do a hybrid of doing both this time. One that's going to have every competition where you can reply to me and tell me what you're going to do. And you don't have to tell me, sorry, I'm going to be out of town this weekend. Just reply if you're going to be able to do it. Spirit officials who are available will respond to my I then keep track of those and then help the event organizer assign which officials are going to come. And typically what we've noticed is we try to pull in someone new with some veteran judges or if it's a small event happening in Clovis, let's say I'll pull judges who are closer to the Clovis area to ensure that they don't have to pay mileage and lose out on their fundraiser that way. Um, in the email state, whether you're a dance or cheer coach, because sometimes it's hard if I'm on my iPhone to try to go back and find the document where everyone's listed with what uh, sport they want to judge. And then let me know if you can't make an event in advance. 
don't let me know the night before the cheer competition that you can't make it because then that puts us in a bind. <laughs> she did have chicken pox. <laughs> If you're selected as a judge, I'll send your email information to the event organizer who then starts up the dialogue and conversation with you about logistics, what time to show up, where to show up. That's when you then ask him or her about the questions about payment and mileage. Here's a list really quick. We're starting this year, November 5th in Gallup. Um, there's three competitions happening in November. We have some happening in December. December 17th, we have some... Um, taking place in both Rio Rancho and Portales. So I'm really gonna need help with those of you stepping up where you see that there's two competitions on one date. These will be sent to you. Um, January and February, we start getting heavier into our competition month. And then you're gonna see doubles taking place again, happening in different parts of the state. In March, you're gonna see some leading up to state. And at the bottom, you're gonna see um, all of you have been to the NMAA website before. If you do backslash spirit, you'll find all these score sheets, information on what each routine is to look like, and anything else exciting you want to know about spirit. So if we're hoping that this um, internet is going to be able to play our game day. They called out the team, and the team hits the floor. Can everybody see it? And can you hear me through this microphone, or is it just for the camera? This one didn't have the narration, but here's their hay song. The um, the NMAA will show you, if you go to that website I showed you, exactly what the requirements are. <laughs> what you'll notice with this is they didn't do that game day situation where they called out what's happening. They're just showing the different elements with this routine. Yeah, so that's what's different about this one is they went in a, in a sequence of by thinking of what their score sheet was. This is just showing the different elements. We'll have the announcer announce it. <coughs> it's whatever the announcer calls out. So you got to have them ready to just do whatever they call out. There's specification and fight song about motion. 
names needing to be consistent, so it's not like they can do some kind of random jam, but you can find those on the NMM NMAA website, what the requirements are. Thank you for coming. I look forward to judging with you, and we're really excited. We're going to take one more question. <laughs>